Good afternoon, bird bros. It's time to check out another failed pilot. Also, Pan is here again, since I guess this is something we do here now. What's up, fellow zizzles? Today's pilot is a little interesting because it was actually created in part to promote a line of toys. The Iz. I'm sure if you grew up in the early 2000s, you know what I'm talking about. But you don't know it by name. This is the Iz. Perfect. See ya! How do you feel 10 seconds after recording that TikTok? Camera! When the cameras aren't rolling, when it's just you, alone, surrounded by zero. So this here is the is, obviously. Pretty baller toy, right? I'll give you guys a brief TLDR on the toys before I get into the actual pilot itself. Something special about the early 2000s is that a lot of companies began to value aesthetics over functionality. While we may not have had the most effective products, they looked pretty damn cool. One of the biggest toy trends at the time was the idea of a quirky animatronic speaker that you could play music from your iPod on. The most notable product from this era would absolutely be the iDoll line. I actually had an iFish myself. Deciding to hop on this trend, the company Zizzle decided to create the Iz toy that we just showed you. Unfortunately for Iz, it would be massively overshadowed by other products at the time, such as the iDog. To stand out against similar toys, Zizzle would have various marketing strategies. Much like the iDog, smaller, shittier versions of the Iz could be found as Happy Meal toys at McDonald's. Personally, at the time I was growing up, getting an adult meal with more than four nuggets like I deserve, I never got an Iz. Also, I was actually burnt out by all these robot pet toys. Yeah, I had a poochie, but they're fun for like an hour and that's it. Unless you enjoy dismantling them to to eat the wiring inside like me, they struggle to hold my attention compared to video games. Maybe that's why these things zizzled out. But yeah, a lot of stupid babies like Mango finally remember getting the toys and their stupid baby Happy Meals. The funny thing about Iz is no one knows their name, yet if you upload a photo of one, you unlock a core memory from someone's brain. All this says about the product is that the design was the only memorable quality. However, I guarantee you that even those few Iz owners never saw Zizzle's other marketing strategy, a cartoon! The pilot showcases Iz, a being created for the government to spy on other countries for some reason. They wanted to set his ass to North Korea. While en route to said country, Iz crash lands in Peoria, Illinois. North Korea isn't sounding so bad anymore, is it? Iz happens upon a family of five. Three kids, a depressed mother, and a dad with a desperation to become a radio host and a mass clout. Also, they all fucking hate Peoria, which they mention a lot throughout the episode. Hello, we're stuck in Peoria? Some asshole who looks like Pidge's neglected older brother is obsessed with trying to shut down the dad's shitty radio station because he works for a rival station called Crushman. No offense, but why does Crushman feel threatened by a station that literally nobody listens to? The dad, being potentially the most pathetic radio host of all time, has a whopping one viewer before Iz takes over the show and everybody... dances to him talking? From our sponsor? Blah. Also, there's a side plot where the family's QAnon-believing neighbor tries to kill Iz with cooking equipment, such as the effects living in Peoria has on the mind. I should also mention the three kids have an emo band where they sing about how they hate breakfast. Eat your breakfast! Yeah. beef with breakfast is, but mid-practice they have an MCR level fight and end the practice. This argument is never addressed by the way. Later in the episode, the band just continues as if nothing happened. In fact, with the dad's newfound clout, he immediately decides to take a massive risk with his emotionally unstable teenage children's band and air them and their new homie is on the station. To their credit, the kids sing their heart out only to realize they weren't even on the air because the douchebag from earlier shut off their electricity to do a little trolling. The men in black had heard Iz on the radio right before the power was shut off and are like, Yo, we gotta get this fucker back and send his ass to Russia! The radio station is about to fall under again because their power was off, which wasn't even their fault. So they come up with a devious, sneaky, tricksy little plan to save the station. The band and Iz head over to Crushman Station to perform and gain the viewers' sympathy to save their own station. The Glowies show up and try and take Iz because they're feds and feds suck. Fuck the police! All of this is live, so a ton of Peoria citizens call in and are like, Yo, free my man Iz! And then the president calls in and is like, Let Iz go! 
Can we just take a moment to appreciate that the president of the U.S. is listening to a radio station from fucking Peoria? Anyways, the feds were like, damn, that's crazy. Guess Mr. President says we gotta let him go. And they all lived happily ever after and saved the radio station. Uh, who cleans all of that? Is it you? Uh, the countertop, scrub it hard, I presume. For some reason, despite being a straight-to-DVD release, Episode 2 was not included on the original DVD, which made it very hard to find. We could only find a Romanian dub and no sub. However, thanks to insert Twitter username here, they typed up a fan sub, which will be linked in the description. So now, let me summarize the plot of episode two. Because the mom always wanted to be a music producer and the rest of the family hated Peoria, they relocated to Balston. Is that, a, is that an accent? The gang is living in a hotel while they find a place to live. This episode centers more on Iz and what it means to belong. Iz feels neglected and one of his bandmates is jealous of him hogging the spotlight. This conflict is never resolved. Iz also decides to be a lovable goof by picking fights with random hotel attendants just like my drunk uncle. There has never been a reported death caused by an elevator crashing, but Iz believes there's a first time for everything. Meanwhile, Iz discovers that more of his kind have been created. Oh, look at my beautiful eraser head babies. Those babies have been created by Crushman, their rival that also moved from Peoria to Boston. What is this guy's problem? Apparently, Crushman and Qunon Lady had snuck into the hotel room to steal Iz's schematics to make those two clones. Iz abandons his family and heads to the rival station. He befriends the other Iz's and makes a song together, which shoots Crushman's station to the top of the charts. Meanwhile, the dad is so mentally broken from the low ratings that he cobbles together a fake Iz to take care of. Buddy, it's over. She ain't coming back. Clean up the built-in flashlight and take that to the trash. Oh, would you look at that. Iz becomes so popular in this episode that the kids go out and buy Iz toys. Considering the lack of real-life sales, my suspension of disbelief is broken beyond repair. Now, the fame's great, but Iz decides family is more important. No, it's not. His two clones are still evil working for Crushman, so he needs to win them over. To do that, he needs to give them a soul. Yes, souls are brought up in both episodes, but are not elaborated on in any way. Maybe an unmade later episode would have given an explanation? So Iz calls up the professor who created him. After an operation, the two Izzes now have souls! Where did he get those souls? Were they from a donor? Was this some dark magic? Do they have memories of the past? I don't know! But those little hellspawn now hate Crushman too. Having a soul is when hating rival radio station. The three Izzes raid Crushman's broadcast to basically say, hey, yo, fuck this guy. This guy sucks. He can't please his wife. His kids hate him. His dog hates him. He plays bass. Screw him. Go check out this baller ass station run by the family instead. The Crushman employees get assaulted with mashed potatoes and the band plays together successfully. And the episode ends with the employees getting fired. Worshipping some god. <laughs> I am absolutely in love with Iz as a character. He is lovable in absolutely every way. He just wants to get everyone's attention and do some trolling. Little dude just wants to be loved and get a little silly and honestly, who can't relate to that? He's fleshed out with his existentialism, wondering what he is and why he exists, but in a way that's not too dark and easy for younger audiences to digest. Despite having such a complex character, Iz also manages to be a fantastic comic relief, and I enjoyed every moment of his goofy antics on screen. I also love Iz's design in general. It's goofy, unique, and the animators actually got creative with how to draw him since he didn't have any arms. Is functionally speaking, moved like a bird, only using his legs and mouth for movement. Although I absolutely love Is, there are a multitude of issues with the plot. The first episode is an origin story, which is fine, but pilots are often better when they tell a typical one-off episode. It gives a better idea what the audience will usually get. Episode 2 was exactly that. It had a much better flow and was probably more of a normal episode for what is and the Zizzles intended to be. I generally wonder how different the reception would have been if they chose Episode 2 for the pilot instead. Although, one issue I have is with the characters themselves. I think Iz is a great character both in design and personality, but literally everyone else in the show is just a flat and forgettable OC. Again, one of the band members gets jealous of Iz taking the spotlight and it's never addressed again. 
Ben. If you think Zizzle was a bit out there for trying to create a TV show based off of a toy, they really weren't. In fact, some of the most popular TV shows at the time were created with the intention of promoting toys, and they weren't bad either. Care Bears, Hello Kitty, G.I. Joe, My Little Pony, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Transformers all had shows based around already existing toys and were wildly successful. In fact, if you check out Pan's channel, he actually covered the very successful theatrical Lego movies on his channel last month. When you try to get up from those impossibly sticky floors, does your body stay? <laughs> I genuinely enjoyed the second episode a lot and probably would have watched the show had the second episode been the pilot. I can't help but wonder if the show would have succeeded if they had actually made episode 2 the pilot, but sadly we'll never know. Can't you hold the flip side?